Last week and there was a huge announcement for the Python and web development world. This is PyScript which allows you to run Python in your HTML code and this is super simple to set up. So this is a super exciting project and today we have a first look at it. PyScript gets developed by the people from Anaconda and now before I show you how to use it, let's quickly go over the features that PyScript offers. First of all, it allows us to run Python in the browser, so it enables drop-in content, external file hosting and application hosting without the reliance on server-side configuration. So this is just HTML in the end. Then we can use the whole Python ecosystem, so of course we can use all core modules, but we can also run many popular packages of Python and the scientific stack such as NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn and more. This is super cool for machine learning and data science websites. For example, we can very easily show matplotlib in the browser. Then we can combine it with JavaScript. So we have a bi-directional communication between Python and JavaScript objects. And with this, we can, for example, very easily run a Mario game in the browser, which I show you at the end. Then we get environment management. So it allows users to define what package and files to include. We get a visual application development so we can use readily available curated UI components such as buttons, containers, text boxes and more. And we have a very flexible framework, so a flexible framework that can be leveraged to create and share new pluggable and extensible components directly in Python. So this all sounds super exciting and now let's have a look at how to use it. So let's have a look at how to get started. So we could download it and compile it ourselves. So for this we need Node.js. Or we can simply click on install and then we get just kidding, you don't need to install anything. So we just have to include one CSS file and one JavaScript file and this is hosted for us. So we can copy this and then here I have a basic HTML code and in the head section we now paste this in. So here we have the link to the style sheet which is a CSS file and then we include the script. So this is PyScript.js. And now if we go back to the website, we can grab this example script. So now in the body here, we can start the PyScript element. And now here we can have any Python, uh, any Python code that we want. So for example, here we say print, now you can. And then we have the closing text. And this is all that we need. So here I have Visual Studio Code and I have the live server. So now I can click on go live and this should start a website. And now here we have the PyScript tests and now you can. So it's printing what I print here. So this is how to use it. Now let's have a look at a few more examples and you also find them on the official GitHub repository. So this is open source and there you find a cool getting started markdown file that you can check out. So now let's insert another PyScript element and here we can define a function for example where we compute Py, then we return Py, then we call this function and then again we print the result. So now let's save this and then go back to the website and if we refresh this then here we see Py is approximately 3.142. So this works as well. So here are a few more examples. So this is how we can set a HTML element afterwards. So we can give it a ID, for example, today. And then in a PyScript, we say PyScript.write. And then we use this ID and here we write the date of today. So then here we um, again write the variable of Py, which is defined here. And for this, we use a diff with the ID pi, and we also give it a class for styling. So for this, I included another script, which is using bootstrap. So now this is a class from bootstrap. And then let's also see how we can use matplotlib and how we can use a local file. So in order to use this in the top, we define the pyenv and here we define all the libraries we need. So the scientific libraries like numpy and matplotlib are already included. So we just have to list this here. 
Then we can list the paths and here we can list all the files that we want to include. So here I created a local file data.py that is using numpy and is creating two random arrays. So now um, let's again create another um, Py script. And here we have a new div with the ID plot. And here we say output is plot. So this is where the plot will appear. Then we can import the libraries like in normal code. We also import our function from the local data file. Then we create our data and then we say plt.subplots and, and do what we want with matplotlib. And then here we simply list the figure. And now if we save this and go back to the file, then this might take a few moments. So it's still not the fastest, but now here it works. So here we have again this pie with a different styling and here we have our matplotlib plot. So yeah, super cool. Now I want to show you one more cool feature and this is how easily we can use a REPL on our website. So for this we just include this pie REPL element and give it a ID and then we can say auto generate equals true. And if we refresh the website then here we have a REPL and here we can run any Python code that we want. For example, again, print hello world and then I press shift enter and then it gets evaluated and here we see the output. For example, I can also import a module and then print, um, let's say random rand in between one and 10 and then again, shift enter and then here we have an output. So this is super cool how easy we have a dynamic REPL on the website. So how does this work? For this, I recommend to visit the Anaconda engineering blog. So in this post, they go a little bit about what and why, and then they go over the stack they use. And basically they built on top of an existing ecosystem. The main magic behind this is WebAssembly. So if you don't know what WebAssembly is, then I'll have an, a link below the video so you can learn more about this. Then they use mscripten, which is an open source compiler toolchain to WebAssembly and Pyodide, which is Python implementations compiled to WebAssembly. This is another cool open source project that makes all of this possible. So shout out to them. And yeah, so this is in a very early stage and so is PyScript. So this is still in alpha, so very early. So it's exciting what will come in the next weeks. But yeah, um, let me know in the comments what you think about this. And now finally, let's play Mario. So yeah, Mario also is available in the PyScript repository under the example. So here you can check this out and here you see that it combines the PyScript Python code with JavaScript files. This is super cool. Let me know if you also check it out and then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.